Sorry, spoilers, <laughs> we're all dead. The bag broke at the end of the movie, so yeah, I guess it's the end of the world as we know it. Who wants to go pillage and plunder with me? Let's see if we can't get ourselves a new TV. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another Midnight Showing. As always, I'm Kelly, and I just got out of Inferno. Oh man, what the hell happened? I personally like the Da Vinci Code. It's kind of like Indiana Jones meets National Treasure, but it was decently entertaining and it had some cool ideas with it. Angels and Demons... It was okay. It's been a long time since I've watched it and I've had no inclination to ever watch it again. I think that might tell you the quality of the movie based on that. Then we get to this movie and this is where it just completely shits the bed. This is where it's... Oh my god, there's like almost nothing good about this movie. It's just... It's mind-boggling. And not in the good way. This movie should have been mind-boggling because of all the twists and turns it takes. But no, it's mind-boggling because of how forced and obvious everything is. Uh, yeah. I think that we just need to get into it. Don't worry, this next part is going to be really short. So let's start with... Tom Cruise is trying. He is trying his damnedest to make this movie work in so many ways. And I say that knowing he's probably the only one pushing to get these movies made because it gives him a role where he can legitimately have fun in. And yeah, he does put 110% into his performance. And I will say that for what the movie was trying to get across, Tom Cr Tom Hanks was able to actually get this across. I almost said Tom Cruise there. Sorry, I just recorded the other one. And honestly, the only other cast member that seems like they're actually trying is Ephraim Khan. And I apologize if I said your name wrong. But honestly, you are the best part of this movie, Ephraim. And I really wish you were in more of it. For as much as Tom Hanks is trying in this movie, as hard as he can to make this the most interesting performance that he can, the writing is holding him back. Ephraim Khan, on the other hand, the writing actually supported what he was doing, and the way that he nonchalantly basically acted like he doesn't give a fuck was so entertaining. Why aren't you in more of this movie, man? Seriously, if it was just a movie of Tom Hanks and Ephraim Khan going on this adventure, I probably wouldn't have any complaints about this convoluted, stupid story I'm about to break apart in a second. Because... They really are the only two things that are trying in this movie. Enough tap dancing, let's move on. So, everyone else in this movie other than those two actors sucks. Felicity Jones was just there for a stupid twist where she turns out to be the bad guy at the end. Which is so dumb in so many ways. I swear they ripped this twist straight from the perfect vacation or perfect holiday, whatever. You know, that one where it turns out that the couple that we're following are actually the bad guys. Because everything that they've done throughout the rest of the movie starts to conflict with the stupid twist ending. Yeah, that's Felicity Jones in this entire thing. But before I can talk about her, I do have to mention the plot of this movie. So, Tom Hanks wakes up inside of a hospital where an assassin tries to kill him. His doctor, played by Felicity Jones, manages to get him the hell out of there, only to find out that apparently he's been unraveling a mystery and now he doesn't remember any of it because he got shot in the head and lived. Starting to see bullshit there? And thus they have to track down the clues to find a virus hidden by an eccentric billionaire who defaced historical artifacts that he cares about deeply and greatly just for a find the treasure easter egg hunt it's so the clues are obvious the twists you can see coming from a mile away and for fuck's sake the way that this movie ends yeah 
Okay, going back into Felicity Jones's part in this entire plot, for the first two-thirds of the movie, she is just a person who likes puzzles that's accompanying Tom Hanks on this wonderful adventure around the world. And contributes next to nothing. She kills she kills somebody when trying to save Tom Hanks, but that's about it. Um Yeah, and then once you realize that she's the bad person who basically set all of this up and even faked Tom Hanks getting shot in the head so that she could just get this stupid virus and release it and kill half the world's population. Because that's the whole point of this, is that overpopulation is killing the world and you need to kill half the human race in order to, you know, save it. But, oh God, it just... Everything... Everything's wrong with this movie, this setup. And I can't honestly say that it's my, the actor's fault. I, it's probably just the material they're given. Because, well, let's get to the next big problem in this movie. It talks down to the audience the entire two and a half hours. It's running. Okay, that might have been an over-exaggeration. I think the movie's only two hours and ten minutes. But you see the point. With the other movies, there was always some kind of reverence towards all the history that they were unfolding, the artifacts that they were getting to, the, you know, Tom Hanks working through all of these different things, all of the different ideas and possibilities going through his head, and just, it was fascinating to see how the, the guy's mind worked, and he always talked about even stuff he didn't believe in, like the last messiah and all that crap, he, he didn't believe in it, but, you know, even when he talked about it, he still talked about its importance, its reverence, how it all fit in with history, even if it wasn't real or if it wasn't the way that people perceived it. There is none of that in this movie. Dante's Inferno is just a plot point to get you from point A to point B. You know, the Da Vinci Code actually had a point. You know, all the clues was basically leading up to some big revelation. Dante's Inferno was just basically a spreadsheet template that this billionaire used to make his stupid world-killing virus. And the history parts of it are superficial at best. And what's worse is when they do talk about the history parts, they always have to explain things and hammer it into your fucking head because we're all idiots. Not these people on the screen, just us, the audience. We can't figure out what an anagram means. Seriously. They have to explain that this is an anagram that we're looking at, and then they have to explain what an anagram is, because we're too stupid to realize that an anagram is just mixing up the letters. I will give credit that the climax of this movie, the last 20 minutes, is kind of engaging, if only for the fact that something is actually happening of weight. But as I said before, the bag broke. Oh, well... It didn't get out of the box. <laughs> Bullshit. From what I've heard in the book, it actually, they weren't sure whether or not it actually hadn't gotten out of the box. So, yeah, the world could have been screwed. And I think that would have been a much better ending, personally. But instead, we get the cutesy, smaltzy, oh, Tom Hanks gets the girl that he could have had at any time because, heaven forbid, he finds a different school to teach at. No, seriously, he he left her because he didn't want to leave Cambridge. It was it Harvard? No, it was Cambridge. Yeah, just like Indiana Jones, I guess, right? Because you spend about as much time teaching as he does. For fuck's sake, this is stupid. Yeah, no, you probably are going to guess what this is before I put the title card up, but anyway... This movie gets an honest to God skip it. It wasn't insulting enough to earn a fuck it, but I see no reason to recommend this movie on any of its very, very few good merits. And, yeah, I don't see you being entertained even if I recommended it on those. If you want some kind of historical insight, go watch National Treasure. Go watch Indiana Jones. Go watch The Librarians on TNT. You'll get a hell of a lot more out of it than this. Supposedly there's a fourth book. I don't know if we're actually going to get it in film format. Probably if Tom Hanks really is the guy pushing for these movies. We'll see. And that's it for me. Have you seen Inferno? God, I hope not. Tell me what you thought about it and the other... Uh... 
What do we call this trilogy of movies? I don't care. Tell me what you thought about Da Vinci Code and Angel and Demons, all those inside of the comments below. Maybe we'll get some healthy discussion going. And as always, if you like what you see, be sure to hit the like button, the share button, and subscribe for more, which I'll have the link, new annotations up. They gave me access to those new ones that actually work on the on mobile stuff now, which, yeah. So, nuke tile card at the end. And yeah, that's it for me, so I'll see you all next time.